when Austin was born, he was like a little wizened old man already. He listens more than he talks. It's one of the reasons that people gravitate towards him. He's just an amazing child. He was from the get-go, thoughtful nature about, about the world around us. I was at school in club water polo. I played set, so I played the two-meter position right in front of the goal. I absolutely love that. I was just finished with my freshman year of high school, about to go into my sophomore year of high school. I was about to get back from vacation and start summer training for water polo. We had won this really cool trip to Florida. And we'd rented a boat that we'd been taking out from, from the island to some of the neighboring islands. I walked to the front of the boat and I took off my shirt and I dove in the water. And I still remember his body floating to the surface of the water. The second he came to the surface, it didn't look right. I just kept trying to swim to the surface and I, I kept not getting there. I was terrified. I just remember holding my breath and he he floated up to the surface with his back up. He had a terrified look on his face. He ended up hitting a sandbar. R really the first time that I realized something was like genuinely very seriously wrong was after they'd gotten me to shore and I was touching something and it felt cold and kind of hard and I'm like, gosh, like somebody please move this rock or whatever that is and I was touching my leg. I think in some ways, I, I think I remember him saying, it's gonna be okay, you know, telling me. <laughs> Austin had shells in his ears and, in, you know, his hair for, I think, the next two weeks. I had grabbed a shell off the beach when we left. Um, in the helicopter that I still have. We didn't have a clue. Yeah, I wouldn't even call us a novice, at novice level, right? We were oblivious. I never knew anybody who had a spinal cord injury. My parents, pretty much right after I got hurt, started looking at, I mean, what are the best rehabs? Where can you send somebody? There was a place, and it just was such a relief. The biggest thing was that the person from Craig was so positive in a really weird way. And I don't just mean positive like, oh, you're totally fine. I mean positive in the sense of like, this is where you are now. Things are only going to get better. You can if you want to. You can probably live independently at your level. It'll take work but you can do these things. Rehab was all day, every day. I was pretty on board with that. It's this application of everyday skills and of dealing with these changes socially and emotionally that Austin was gonna have to go through. A spinal cord injury doesn't just affect, you know, how I move and what my health needs are, it affects every other aspect of my life, and those in turn are gonna come back on the medical one if I'm... That's something that I think that Craig handles really well because it doesn't divorce those two. You're a person as much as you are a patient. We were talking about him not losing pace with his, with his studies. Initially, people thought we were nuts. I started working with Laura really early because I was, I got to Craig and obviously not being able to play water polo anymore. Let's focus on the things that I can do and that I care about. And, and my academics really were one of those things. 
What a determined young man. Austin's not a typical guy. He wanted to stay involved in all of his classes. So she was able to coordinate with the school and figure out ways. She set up ways for them to do FaceTime classes. Some of the teachers did that. Some of the teachers would send her the work and so he could take the tests with her. We worked in the evenings. We worked on the weekends. She just made sure that everything ran smooth. His intellect was his identity. And so when he lost what he lost, he didn't lose his identity. There were several other people my age. It was clear that there was an interest in going back to school. There was also a large amount of concern about where the money was going to come from for something like speech to text software, which is, you know, kind of a necessity when you're talking about somebody who can't move their hands well enough to type. I saw a lot of parents who were struggling to, you know, it, is it a choice between PT, getting PT, and having a laptop for your kid to, you know, be able to access school. I don't think it's something that somebody should have to struggle to do. The economic system that we were talking about. Austin wanted his peers to have some of the opportunity that he had to access technology in order to continue their education. We decided to put this, this organization together, Spinal Cord Injury Scholars Fund, in order to provide those students uh, technological resources to continue in their education. Pr pretty much anything that is assistive technology related that could be in some way helpful for them to interact with technology that they need to make sure that they can operate on the same level as somebody who isn't disabled at school. Aiden, Austin's brother, would play music down at the pier and raise money that way. I've been street performing for, for a pretty long time, since probably I was a sophomore in high school. I started uh, playing trumpet when I was pretty young. He would hold drives at school in different ways, and he raised funds. Uh, the way that I did that was by, you know, building relationships with these people and, and trying to communicate the needs of the students at Craig in a way that they can understand, because it's not something that people think about a lot, and, and it is something that people should think about. Technology is pricey, and technology changes. Within the first year that uh, our organization was established, we had raised thousands of dollars for these students, and it warms my heart to know that you know now this organization can continue on its own. I guess I didn't do it because it made me feel good. I did it because it felt like there was good that I could do. I've thought pretty hard about where, where working on something like assistive technology fits into my career. It's always been something that I've kept myself, I mean, immediately close to. Actually, that, that one sort of made sense. Yeah, that one made sense. That yeah. one made sense. Yeah. Um, I know whatever he wants, he will get. He's leading an amazing life. He has traveled the world since he's been injured. I'm proud of him for it. I'm proud to say that he's my brother. In this experience, it was like a safety blanket. And they took care of us. And that is what Craig provides. It provides community. It's the definition of community. I want people to know that if they wind up there, they will see possibilities and opportunities that would never have been seen before, and that they will find humor and joy and love and acceptance through Craig into the next chapter of their lives.